well. We'll have a waiting list for artists to get their stuff. Nice. Safe. Okay, so six I'd like to welcome everyone to the October 2nd uh, Newmarket Town Council meeting and we will start as always with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank
get up to speed and uh, meet with staff and have some uh, initiation into the, the process. And also it clarifies them when they'll adopt the uh, rules as well as appointing chair. It's not at the same session as being this, uh, this morning yet. Section 4.1 changes the title of town administrator to town manager. Currently, the position of town administrator in New Market has all the authority of the town manager, um, section 4.6 of the charter, plus some authority of the city managers. However, the title town administrator is confusing. In non-charter towns, the town administrator does not have the same authority as the town manager, uh, or only the authority that select boards give the positions. You could be anywhere from a administrative, truly administrative assistant to the select board to a town manager's authority, but it's only depending on what the um, board allows it. To by changing the title it, to reflect the actual position, it would clarify the chief executive's authority and duties. In addition, which I'm not, this isn't happening, if the position would ever become vacant, it's actually more enticing to candidates to be hired as a town manager than town administrator um, due, due to that confusion on the authority and the law. Next is uh, powers and duties of town administrator. Currently, the charter states that the town administrator has no uh, authority over elections to surprise elections that the town clerk is the chief elections officer. That's not uh, consistent with state law. The town moderator by state law is the chief elections officer. This uh, section 5.2 for budget procedure. Uh, we run into this just more of a question is what happens if the town council fails to adopt the budget by November 15th and send it on to the um, town the budget committee under city charters if the city council or board of aldermen do not adopt the chief executive the city manager or mayor budget by a date certain the executive budget becomes law we don't have a provision in the charter if the council does not opt adopt a, a budget prior to the required date of submittal to the municipal budget committee this would have just had the town administrator's budget be forwarded on if it's not accepted. By law, though, the, the municipal budget committee, if they don't approve it, that has to go on. To, it, the, the council's budget would go on. The budget hearing, uh, section 5.3, it changes it from 20, at least 25 days before the first session of the annual meeting to honor before the third Tuesday in January. When the town charter was amended to follow procedures of the official ballot law for budget adoption, it didn't amend the date and time for holding the budget public hearing. This just reflects that change and uh, lines it up with the rest of the law. Uh, 5.7, the capital improvement plan. It just uh, clarifies whose budget that the CIP must be pre presented by and allows for the administrator to submit it as part of their budget. Currently, it doesn't state, uh, it just says the final date of submission for the budget. It doesn't say whose budget. So this is saying it has to be in by the uh, budget, uh, mayor's budget to the council, so October 15th. 11.3 is terms of office. This uh, changes that any elected official will now be sworn in on the first, uh, in April, following their appointment or election on the first Monday. So it gives them a month to also have some transition time. Uh, and that any appointed committees also would um, begin on the first Monday in, in April. So you can have at least some time between the election and that. And those are the proposed charter amendments. Thank you. So um, we'll have the opportunity to ask questions when, once we um, accept the resolution. Um, so for now, I'm going to close the public hearing <coughs> at 707 and next on the agenda is for the council to consider acceptance of minutes so I would accept a motion to approve the minutes of um, September 18th 2019 I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from September 18th 2019 second any oh. um, <laughs> you had, okay. I tried to find my button. Sorry. Your cast. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, on uh, line 102, it says that the um, it says donation uh, it should be application. 
and then on 108 I just wanted to maybe uh, do a clarification there in the interest of anyone reading the minutes at a future date or had, hadn't watched the meeting um, maybe we want to say that they is the town council oh just to make that clear for so somebody doesn't have to wonder mm -hmm. what it, who are they talking about thank you any other um, changes or questions you can call the roll please Councilor Finch Aye. Council Sanders. Aye. Council Dumont. Aye. Council Kuyper. Aye. Council Cass. Aye. Council Weinstein. Aye. Motion passes 6 0. And so, next on the agenda is the town administrator's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the first item on my report is that I'm pleased to announce that I've been approached to have the town partner with students from UNH in AECM, a local architecture and engineering firm, on two capstones projects. The capstone is a multi layered assignment that students do at the end of their academic career. Um, while similar in some ways to a college thesis, capstone projects may take a wide variety of form, but are most of long-term investigative projects that culminate in a final product presentation of performance. Uh, this will take uh, two semesters to do this. The two projects are as follows. Um, one, the New Market Waterfront Improvements. To produce a feasibility study on program rehabilitation, seawall repair, public access enhancement, and other items to the waterfront. And the other is a Durham to New Market Recreation Trail Study. Um, and it would be studying prepared bikes, pedestrian bicycle trail from New Durham to Newmarket. I presented their capstone projects to the report and just received their um, actual reports over the weekend and did not have a chance to give them to you guys yet on that. But I will be entering into agreement with these for these two projects. It should be minimal cost to the town, but having engineers students from UNH study it for us. The next is on Wednesday, September 25th, the New Hampshire House and Senate approved a compromise budget for the next biennium. New Market stands to receive an additional $420,851 in aid from the state. Um, of this, the town will receive $195,076 of, of the aid, and the remaining will go to the school. I want to give an update on the Bay Road, Loverland Creek things. It is our goal. We, there have been a number of delays due to the manufacturing of a new culvert. The culvert, um, where it's being constructed, has been pushed back uh, due to they're busy on their end. Uh, we should have the crane being installed shortly, and their goal is to have Bay Road reopened by October 18th. We know that we said October, by the end of September, but we just got pushed. They couldn't do anything if we didn't have the culvert constructed. Again, I want to remind people that that is a could active construction site and you should not they should not be trespassing in that area um, for their own safety uh, during this time. Finally I've said to announce that Irene Garland, uh, the last recipient of the uh, Boston Post Gate, has passed away. After doing research, Teresa Bovair, two Mount Pleasant Street, at 98 years old, is the oldest living resident in Newmarket and the most qualified to receive the Boston Post Gate. And she's agreed to accept it. We will be scheduling a small ceremony at a later date. And that is all I have tonight. Thank you. Um, Councillor Cast. Um, I had a couple questions, but I'll, I can do one at a time if any, anyone mm -hmm. else wants to chime in. On the capstone projects, uh, uh, I was just curious about the rec trail. Um, has any possible route been? No, that's what they're going to do. That's part of the study will be to figure out yeah, a we, route we, for that. That's not even on our radar. They came up with the, pro the project. So. Oh, OK. Yeah. All right, so we don't really have any details. Nope. Okay, all right. Is that all? Uh, yeah, actually, okay. yes, thank you. Councilor Dumont. Uh, for the town administrator, at this point, is it just waiting for the installation of the uh, the culvert? Is everything else completed on the project? Yeah. Up to where we can? Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Sanders. I just had a quick question about the funds that came to are coming to us from the budget. Is that similar to the amounts we thought we were going to receive? That's an above and beyond what we thought we would Okay, receive. great. Hmm. Um, and then I just have a quick question about the capstone projects. So will they have the, or will we have the opportunity to interact with the students? And The, the goal is, as you know, um, the agenda tonight is a resolution to appoint the waterfront advisory committee. My sense would be that 
committee would work with the students. Uh, I didn't need to, I need to hear a little bit more about the Durham one, uh, to Newmarket, because that may have to be a larger committee of both com communities. So I need to talk to my co my colleague in Durham to find out. Great. All right. So moving on. <coughs> oh, sorry, <coughs> Councilor Kuiper. Um, just a quick question. Have you ever worked with them on anything like this before, or the Capstone Project? I have no. And um, do you think that whatever they end up with will be, like, of the quality that it's usable? Yeah, in the um, engineering? absolutely, because I think that's what the architecture firm is also Okay, so that's working with, okay, yeah. cool. And I would say that we've worked with UNH on other projects, or with students. Um, I know, gosh. The road study. The road study. Yeah. That was a, quite a long time ago. Um, although they did the second road study too. Did they? they did. They did yeah. the update a couple of years ago because they were yeah. trying. We were actually a test um, for new software. For this. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, Councilor Dumont. Uh, yes, from the town administrator. Forgive my ignorance. Um, uh, Councilor Kuiper uh, kind of brought this into my mind. Um, in working with UNH students, do we get a, a project framework of what they think would be good for the town, and then it's up to the town to decide if we want to initiate and move forward with that? Is, is their role designed in consulting and creating something tangible that then we can go act on? Or where, where does their input come from, and where does it end at that point? You know what I'm saying? No. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I guess, um, let's say a project, uh, we'll just look at the Durham 2 Market Recreation Trail. Is their job to map out what a good trail would be, go over costs, timelines related? Exactly. And we have to make a decision as to whether or not we want to move forward with that? Or We don't have to move forward with any project. Okay. It's just <coughs> they're doing this as a, a, to, as a study for their, okay. pro, for the, on their side. So something we can use, we don't necessarily exactly. have to. Okay. Thank I, I've not seen one of these before, yeah. so. And um, just as an example, the original road study, mm -hmm. we didn't really use. No. So. Okay. The second one we did. Yeah. You know, so I guess it all probably depends. Councilor Cast. Uh, going back to the funds that we're going to get from the state. Um, I'm glad to hear that it exceeds what we thought it would be. How does it compare with what we've received in the past that the state stopped providing? Oh, not even close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're still not getting our um, retirement funds. We're still not getting our room meals, full room meals tax. We're still not getting our revenue sharing that we're promised. Um, yeah, not even close. All right. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kuiper. Uh, it, Sorry, just to follow up on that last point, um, is that from, was that 08 when they stopped paying the full rooms and meals? Or like, it was, was it? It was during the Great Recession, yeah, it was during the Great Recession that they stopped doing that. And also they eliminated all the, um, part of the deal is we're in the state retirement system because yep. they're supposed to cover um, a percentage of the police and fire. They do not. And haven't since 08? They haven't since 08. Okay. Um, about the same time, so back in the early, late 60s, early 70s, we had a, a whole hodgepodge of different taxes. And the governor at the time wanted to make it easier. And then Attorney General um, Rudman, who later became senator, stated that, look, the state would never uh, go back on their promise of giving the revenue sharing because we, we lost tax revenue that we could no longer get. And governors, Lynch and Hassan cut it and reduced and zeroed it out in the, during the Great Recession. It's never come back. So, you know, Governor Sununu hasn't returned it, even though we're in better economic times either. So, that's. Thank you. Yep. Okay, moving on. We, um, next on the agenda is committee reports. So, um, are there any committee reports? Councillor Finch. Uh, not so much a full report, but the uh, Conservation Commission uh, is uh, still accepting submissions for the um, photo exhibition at the Stone Church. And the update on that is that it will now be taking place the entire month of November. So instead of October 19th being the start date, it will be November 1st to December 1st. Um, we've had a lot of great submissions so far. 
and a couple of residents have mentioned how it was a good opportunity for them to get out and discover some of our new land. So uh, keep the photos coming in. And again, it's going to start on November 1st, and we'll be accepting submissions through November 1st. Thank you. Any others? Um, I will mention that the um, Energy and Environment Committee had the presentation from Revision Energy last night. And we had about a um, little over 20 people uh, come to the presentation. It was really well done. Um, the conversation, the presentation was all about having a renewable home and using solar um, and using solar to power um, your hot water and um, electric car and battery storage. And it was really, I, I thought, uh, very interesting and um, I look forward to calling the representative from revision and talking about um, whether or not it's an option for my home so it was a it was a nice presentation and um, Don Sanders put the whole presentation that he was the organizer he's on the energy and environment committee so I just wanted to make sure that I said uh, publicly said thank you to him for putting that all together and that's all I have so seeing no <coughs> other committee reports, um, we are on to old business. And we have, um, I would accept a, res a, a recommendation to approve resolu resolution 2019-2020-03, accepting a report on proposed charter amendments. I. Let's see, what's the wording? I, prefer, make, a I make a motion, yeah. sorry. I make a motion to a approve resolution 2019-2020-03, accepting the report of the Government Operations Committee on Proposed Charter Amendments. Second. Thank you. So we've already had um, the presentation from the town administrator. So this would be the time to you know, ask any questions or make any comments. So, um, I had a couple. Seeing no others. Um, sorry, I'm just opening my. Let's see. Um, so, one of my questions, I had a, a couple, like, these are really small detail mm -hmm. questions. Because um, I am in favor of all of these amendments. So, these are just really super minor um, but for amendment two um, just to get a, a little clarification and just make sure that I, I guess everyone understands the timeline so for instance in the next for the next election in 2020 April April 1st is actually the first is the meeting is the first town council meeting so so it would, would be the next Monday Right. In April 2020, you would be the, the whoever's being sworn in on the council would still be sworn in on the following Monday. These would not take effect until the following year. Oh, right. Oh, so it wouldn't take... Correct. Oh. Every, the election one wouldn't take effect till the next one. Oh, I didn't even think of that. But everything okay. else takes effect immediately. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, and um, you had mentioned... Um, like getting up to speed, you know, like using that time for counselors to get up to the new counselors that are elected to get up to speed. And I wondered if there was any thought put into what that would look like, if there would be anything specific. And obviously that wouldn't be a chart, that wouldn't be part of yeah. the charter, but um, some procedures or policies that would be um, in effect. So my experience, both when was serving as a counselor, a city and seeing other cities how they do it is it's actually it's a formal like a day-long mm -hmm. class for the new counselors to learn everything and then even take the tours of the facility on that one day and um, so they're up to speed there and also gives them a chance to attend at least two meetings mm -hmm. which doesn't usually happen it's just you jump right in so we'd encourage that as well um, as everybody knows, once we know your 
you file for office, we provide you with mm -hmm. background information that we can um, that's public until such a time. You, you still couldn't get non-public information at this time, um, but it just gives more time for them to, to read and ask questions. Great. Councillor Fitch. Um, I guess the only question I just had was um, in terms of procedure, because in 2015 was the Charter Commission, right? 13. 13. Oh, was it 2015? Yeah. So I guess that's that's kind of the uh, more in-depth overhaul, and then these proposed amendments would be for 2020. So is there uh, some somewhere that's codified, or is it kind of just at will that these changes get made, I guess? Well, it's two ways. Um, a lot of communities in New Hampshire that have charters have an automatic provision in there that says every 10 years the council should take up a, a vote to whether or not to for, form a charter commission. A charter commission reviews a complete revision of the charter, which would go to everything from abolishing the town council, abolishing town meeting, uh, going to a city, those kind of items. Uh, amendments are what we have here, just small really nothing that's going to change the form of government. It just changes, adds some things and changes it. Um, the Charter Commission didn't put in the provision that every 10, I don't know, I don't remember why. I remember we discussed it. It's not in there? It's not. I th I'm pretty sure. I'll double check. But well, I guess that's the only reason I mentioned that is it just seems like a good idea and the fact that yeah. we've done some refinements. I didn't know if, with, with how councils can have turnover and mm -hmm. stuff, it might just be good to codify that some way, a provision to even just bring it up. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and then when you have a charter commission, though, you also have to have a separate election because um, you have to elect the commissioner separately. They have to have a certain amount of time to do it, mm -hmm. and it goes on the next municipal ballot. It's quite a process. And the, the other communities that have provisions, it's just to at least mention it once every 10 years to yep. see if there's an interest or desire. Yeah. Okay, that's all I go ahead. Um, I had a, another question. Um, let's see. For amendment in section 5-7, it should say manager. Not yeah, manager. it's, <laughs> it's going to be a good question. It, 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 I, I, we're trying to figure out what do we put in because right. it's not if that one doesn't pass because these uh -huh. are all separate questions. Oh. Yeah. So, oh. if one if that doesn't pass, then the wording stays as administrator. If it passes, then everything gets changed. Okay. Huh. That's okay. noted at the bottom of four dot one. Yeah. Sort it's alluded to. Right. John. Yeah. It's, the town attorney is going to check with the secretary of state. Process-wise now is, as soon as you approve this, the attorney would then turn it over to the town clerk. So they work together on it. The clerk then must send it to the Department of Revenue Administration, the Attorney General's office, and the Secretary of State's office for review and approval. They have, I believe, 45 days to do so. And if they don't, then it's approved out of hand. So. Hmm. Um, and then my only other question was um, the November 15th date for the budget, mm -hmm. is that prescribed by state law? No, nope, it's the charter. You must present a budget to the, uh, the council has, I have to present a budget to the council by October right. 15th. The council then has to adopt a budget by November 15th. Mm -hmm. The question was what happens, we, the reason what's clarifying is what happens if they don't. And was it examined at all if that November 15th date is the best date for the, you know, for, for the administration of the town? It's, I mean, the problem is if you do, if you move it, you also have to look at moving the date of the election. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because oh, okay. it falls enough days for the town. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Then that answers the question. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then my only other question is for the committee, and that is um, when we, when we formed the committee, it was to look not just at the charter, but also at ordinances. And I wondered if that had, if you guys had taken a gander. Okay. Is that on the, on the docket? Um, I'll, I can speak sure. to that. Uh, we, at the time, didn't have any ordinances of significant concern that we thought needed immediate revision 
or um, to be addressed. It was agreed by the committee that if we found items that we thought were should be considered, we'd bring them together as a group so we could, you know, go through them one at a time as opposed to having a standing meeting or related. So as items are brought to us, we can re reconvene you, but there was nothing immediately to address. Okay. And for ordinances, that's a simpler process to tweak. Yeah, the council just uh, after public hearing votes them up or down. And seeing no other um, comments, maybe we can call the roll, please. Councilor Finch. Aye. Councilor Sanders. Aye. Councilor Dumont. Aye. Councilor Kuiper. Aye. Councilor Cast. Aye. Councilor Weinstein. Aye. Motion passes to, um, 6 0. And just for clarification, that um, the charter states that the, 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 the excuse me, compare revision codification of the ordinances of the town, which are appropriate for continuation of local laws of the town, at the, and at least every 10 years perform. A comprehensive review of codification is not the charter, it's the ordinances. So, okay. yeah. And uh, thank you to the committee for your work on that. I think that was a, that was a big undertaking. Well, thanks to Steve and his staff <laughs> to remember <laughs> preparing it. <laughs> And, and the uh, the town attorney for reviewing it. So next on the agenda, we have um, resolutions in the first reading. And the first one is resolution 2019-2020-04, purchase of a 2019 <coughs> Ford F-550 4x4 Type 1 ambulance, whereas the fire department needs to replace its 2009 Ford E450 Type 1 ambulance, and whereas the department obtained quotes for a 2019 Ford F550 4x4 Type 1 ambulance from three different vendors, with PVC being the lowest proposal, including trade-in of the 2009 Ford E450 Type 1 ambulance, for the sum of $197,303. Whereas the ambulance revolving fund has a balance of two hundred and three thousand seven hundred and nine dollars as of September twenty fifth, twenty nineteen. Now therefore be it resolved by the Newmarket Town Council that the town administrator is authorized to purchase a twenty nineteen Ford F five fifty four by four type one ambulance from the ambulance revolving fund and enter into any related contracts with PVC for a price not to exceed $197,303. First reading, October 2nd, 2019. Councilor Dumont? Just a quick question uh, for either the chair of the town administrator. I know um, we see it with the police line vehicles that they come every year to get a new one every year. Um, I take it, because um, this is the first time I can really think of that we've seen one for an ambulance. Does the fire department have a similar type of style for rotating out their ambulances, just a greater time scale? Or? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. I think it would be helpful to get that schedule. Yep. Um, the next item is um, Resolution 2019-2020-05, creating an ad hoc riverfront advisory committee. Whereas the Newmarket Town Council has set as one of its goals to improve access to the Lamprey River waterfront, and whereas the town has been notified of a University of New Hampshire capstone project to study waterfront access, and whereas the Town Council wishes to create a committee to review and make recommendations on potential projects, now therefore let it be resolved by the Newmarket Town Council that the Newmarket Town Council does hereby create an ad hoc committee to be named the Riverfront Advisory Committee to be made up as follows. One member of the Town Council, one member of the Conservation Commission, three members of the general public. Let it further be resolved that this committee shall expire on June 30th, 2021. First reading, October 2nd, 2019. And any correspondence to the town council? No. Um, and any closing comments by town councilors? Uh, Councillor Kuiper. 
Um, I was wondering if uh, town administrator could look into some radar controlled um, speed limit signs. Uh, a couple of towns nearby have got them. There's one on Bald Hill Road in Newfields. I thought maybe one coming into town from either end might help to slow down the traffic a little bit because even um, with everything that's been done for the uh, pedestrian safety, it's still sometimes people are speeding down there as someone who walks through town multiple times a day. Cast. Uh, I just want to announce a, one more time uh, that this coming Monday, uh, Councillor Saunders and I will be participating in the, um, I think it's the second second uh, conversation with the counselors program. And it's going to be held at the loft. And I've had a couple questions about where the loft is, because it is mm -hmm. a fairly new business. It's located at 125 Main Street which is the uh, Rivermore Landing building. That's the brick mill building downtown. And the loft is located in the commercial units, which are, you have to kind of go down uh, below Main Street. It's, it's lower than Main Street uh, on that side of the road. And they're located in the units down below. And there is parking down below for the public, for those commercial units, if, um, if you're not walking. It's at 6.30, and uh, again, that's this coming Monday. Councilor uh, Sanders. I just wanted to remind people that um, school buses have rules about how you can pass them or not pass them when their lights are flashing and the stop signs are out. Um, and please just be aware that they, the kids wait for the bus driver usually to give them the thumbs up, but be aware sometimes kids dart. So please mindful of, of stopping for those school buses. It may take an extra minute, but please be aware of the kids. Um, and then I just wanted to mention just a couple things. We had our joint school board town council meeting last week, <laughs> losing track of time. And um, I thought that it was a, uh, a great meeting. It was really uh, wonderful for us to have the opportunity to, to tour both of the facilities. I haven't been in either of those, I haven't been in the elementary school since my kids were in the elementary school. and. And I haven't seen, you know, any of the the new construction. So it was a great opportunity to um, connect with the school board and to uh, talk about some of our our shared concerns. So and thank you to the um, town administrator for preparing presentations for that. And uh, I thought that it was. I thought it, it's just a beneficial exercise, and um, and more than exercise, it, you know, I think that's um, doesn't quite uh, explain what it is. I, I, I it's I don't mean to be um, dismissive at all. Like it's I think it's a really a nice opportunity for both boards to get together and talk about some of our our shared uh, values and concerns for the town. So. Um, and then just a couple other dates that I wanted to mention. October 19th is the Fall Craft Fair at the Sunrise Sunset Center. Um, and October 26th is our budget meeting for the council. And that starts at 9 o'clock. And Councillor Kuiper. Um, I just wanted to thank the CIP committee for um, their work last week and this week. Uh, somewhat arduous task, but necessary. And uh, I want to thank all of them. There's like a little delay, so I knew that you were pressing the button. <laughs> Councillor Cast. Well, I didn't know if Councillor Finch had something to say. It's okay. Uh, I attended the ribbon cutting at the Stone Church's um, solar, new solar array, and uh, it was well attended. There were uh, you know, representation from the town. Um, also, uh, uh, Gosh, who else was there? <laughs> I don't remember. There was the federal federal agency uh, <laughs> that had helped with that. Banker Savings, which had helped fund it. Um, Senator Shaheen. It's, uh, yes, oh my gosh, yes, Senator <laughs> Shaheen. <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, uh, what's the name of the energy company that helped? Revision. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say the wrong name. Uh, Revision Energy. Uh, and Representative uh, Cahill. Yes, yeah, and messages from other other New Hampshire or, or um, 
other representatives. So it was well attended. I think it was received enthusiastically. It was a beautiful day mm -hmm. and a very happy occasion. And I, I hope uh, folks attending it or who have heard about it are excited. It is the second <laughs> commercial, <laughs> not the yes, first, no, no. Uh, but that's okay. Two, two is better than one and mm -hmm. maybe we'll be getting three, four, five. And along those lines, just to add, um, one of the things that came up, I, I think it, it was mentioned at that event, but it was definitely mentioned last night, that um, obviously the town has installed the EV charger at the library. There's one going in um, at the mills for residents there. And it, I, my coffin might have gotten roped in last night, but... Um, the revision energy representative did announce that there will be one at the stone church also. So um, hopefully Mike was aware that that was <laughs> happening. <laughs> so it's nice to see those um, being installed and, and it's, the, it's the future. So seeing no other buttons at this point, um, then we are adjourned.